What's going on, y'all, man? You know, back with another video. Your boy Davion Flickstar. The Shy Episode 6, Season 4, man. Solid episode. The relationship between Gemma and Kevin has turned into a relationship between her and, and, and Jake. Now, overall, this episode was a pretty solid episode. I feel like this episode was the one that we was waiting on the most because we get to see how the the conflict between between Jake and Kevin escalates, you know. And like I said, man, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this at this point, this feels like some trauma some some trauma porn shit every time we get to Kevin, man. Kevin goes through it. I mean, I'm, he he already popped, shot a nigga, lost his lost lost his lost his, his big bro, his surrogate big brother, lost his father, almost lost his sister. His girl is cheating on him. Got traumatized by the police, and now this man just got expelled from school for beating on Jake. And I thought that was pretty harsh. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was pretty harsh, but that's how them Catholic schools be, man. Them, them old preppy schools. That's why I never really rocked with them. You know, I mean, that's after I got kicked out of out of out of a Catholic school, my ass is right over in public school, and I, and I, you know, I, I I turned out okay. I turned out pretty good. So maybe that's what's good for Kevin. Maybe he needs to go to a public school, man. Go back to a public school, man. I I don't know. I don't know. But that's probably some shitty advice. But anyway, man. Now with this review, just letting y'all know, you know how I do. I I do these reviews based on what comes to mind. Whatever I remember, it's not in order. Okay, if I'm not going to put it in chronological order about what happened, and I'm also not going to reveal because I watched it early and then air on TV live. Yet I'm not going to reveal who shot Duda. You'll have to see for yourself. I'm not going to spoil that. But let's talk about the main points. So, you know, your boy Emmett, you know, he's at this establishment, you know, eating a meal, you know, getting high off his own supply of food, of course. Obviously, I just wanted to throw that there. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that into this. You know, you get uh, Dom, and, Dom and Tiff, you know, they come in and they got a business opportunity, you know. And, you know, with Dom being the older one, she had, I, I reckon she has more experience because she's just not going to just jump at the opportunity of, oh shit, this is a business deal. Oh shit, we can get some money. She got questions. Whereas Tiff, on the other hand, she's young and pretty much it shows that she's inexperienced with, with business because she's, she hit a bag. She's ready to jump. So with that being said, it, it can c cause them to bump heads. But you know, I don't think it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna be anything drastic, anything because Tiff does seem pretty humble. I mean, she even came to came to her, came to Dom and said, "Yo, I mean, I'll listen to you and whatever, you know." So we get with Jada. You know, her cancer is getting worse. Well, it's not getting worse, but it's taking a toll on her mentally, physically, and everything. So they're trying to take care of her, and you know, it, it, like I said, for anyone who's had cancer or had a loved one who battled cancer especially if they lost it it could be triggering it's very triggering like i said in my other previous videos i mean having a loved one or having having to battle that deadly disease it's 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 triggering watching it on tv especially when they portray it in the most in the most authentic way you know and so of course i mean they didn't pull a ghost they didn't pull a power move no pun intended with Duda being shot, like I said, I'm not gonna reveal who shot him. But you know, um, he's he, you know, I ain't gonna say that. You know, I ain't just, you know, I hope I ain't give too much. But anyway, <laughs> more important things. You know, you got Papa and Maisha. You know, they doing their thing. They doing a the podcast, and you know, Maisha, she started to pop off with her rapping skills. And like a normal person in human nature, yes, people get jealous. Now, you can be jealous in a way where you have animosity towards that person, or you can be jealous in a way where you're like, damn, 
I need to step my, 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 my stuff up, man. So, you know, of course, I don't think Papa is going to have any kind of animosity or just extreme jealousy towards his own girlfriend, but he just wants to have his podcast grow. He wants to have his podcast cultivate and reach other people. <clears throat> of course, he wants Maisha to be on, on the team, but it's not that she just doesn't want her rap. Her, 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 her rapping skills to take over that. And, that, and that's understandable, but as a person, when you're in a relationship, you're supposed to support your partners. You're supposed to, you know, be there and support them and, you know, and and like I said, Papa, he has a good heart. He's not Jake, of course. He's not a snake, so I don't think he's going to have much towards that. I do think he feels a little, some kind of way because his podcast is slowly cultivated and he doesn't want to want Maisha to Maisha's rap skills, her her skills on the mic to be the reason for that. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of podcasts, we get Jake, Gemma, and Kevin. You know, Kevin is pissed. He don't want to hear nothing. He never wants to. I mean, let's just keep it all the way at being, man. I know that whatever Kevin, whatever Jake did with Gemma, how he took his girl was wrong. But Kevin has a, a small fault in this and that was pushing her away. Still doesn't make it right what she did. I'm not saying that. But some things can be the root and lead to other things to happen. That's just how it is. You know? So they get in the podcast, you know, they're talking, you know. They don't want to really talk to each other. Kevin is pissed at Jake. He is heated. He 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 just he just don't he don't he don't want to rock with Jake and so you know long story short they you know they talking and you know Papa he's like the mediator he wants there to be balance he wants there to be peace but unfortunately <laughs> you can't put you can't put you can't bring peace between two people that that are warring all the time sometimes you just gotta just fall back before you be in the crossfire so you know. Gemma was telling Je telling Kevin about himself, you know, saying that you always pushed me away and you always was never interested in nothing. And but which is true. But then Kevin rebuttals and said, I was interested in you. I loved you. And she said that she loved him and blah, blah. But only thing is, you know how when someone does you wrong and they try to apologize to you and you just had that little smirk that little smile like this dude so i felt kevin i felt kevin from from a six from a 16 year old uh perspective you know we all been there before you know what i'm saying we all been hurt we all had our hearts crushed so you know it's understandable so kevin you know he he storms out the room and they leave and papa you know he goes on, he goes, Papa, Lord bless his heart. I hope he never gets hurt. I mean, I feel so bad for him. So, but before all that, you know, like I said, my reviews, I don't go in order. I go with what comes into my head, okay? Before that, we get Jake, Gemma, and Kevin in the classroom. Jake trying to ignore Kev. Kev automatically, he's with the shits. He ain't no punk. Start beating his ass. We know. Come on, Kevin is not no 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 little kitty cat, man. Kevin got them hands. If you mess with Kevin, you push it. You bring it out of him, it, it, yo nigga. He's gonna do what he gonna do. He's not. He's not no soft kid. He's just a good kid, but he's not soft, man. He ain't soft. That boy got anger issues, low key, man. <laughs> he do. I mean, I'm like, ain't no one bullshitting. Ain't no one is bullshitting. Trust me. And so, you know, you get Nina. You know, she's jumping to conclusions. I mean, it's understandable. All Dre had to do was just keep it real, man. Just keep it real. I mean, you're not doing nothing wrong. The only thing you're doing wrong is keeping secrets. And it's not even a secret. It's not even a secret to be kept. It's nothing to confess. It's just, it, it doesn't even have nothing to do with her. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, you got you got Dre, you know, he's she's confident. She's comforting Jada, you know, cuz of her condition. And you know, her phone's ringing. She's been lying to Nita about about what's been going on. Nita, she she starts stalking. She starts investigating 
see something she didn't want to see, but she jumped to conclusions. So with her assuming that Jada and Dre are hooking up, she finds herself in the bar. Who we see? We see the OG, the GOAT, the brat. No, no, I'm sorry. Not the, the brat. It's not the brat. You're saying it wrong if you're saying the. It's the brat. The brat, she's spitting her little game. But also, I felt the scene was a little bit unrealistic. I mean, it's not the most unrealistic, but it just seemed real fast how things just led up to, to Nina being in the brat's bed. But either or, Nina ends up getting eaten out. You know, she comes home drunk. You know, they get into it. Dre, her getting into it. Then that's when Dre breaks down the news. So now we see Nina. She feels like shit right now. She feels horrible. She feels, she feels dumb about what happened. She she feels dumb. All right. She just she doesn't. She feels bad. So you know we got Emmett. You know he's catering food. You know he's doing his food thing. You know he he's a hustler. I gotta admit it. You know he sees Kevin. Kevin and um, Kevin and he's feeling horrible. He's feeling bad, you know. He and it's understandable when you have someone that you love or whatever, whoever does you foul, it makes you, it puts you in this little. Uh, you you kind of paralyzed with pain emotionally, so you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to talk to nobody. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to participate in nothing. And then when your parents is participating, it's forced you to do stuff. It's just. Mm -mm. But, you know, Emmett, as the big bro, I mean, he turns into Darnell a little bit. I get Darnell vibes from, from the advice he just told Kevin, you know. He gives him some big brother advice. And, you know, we see Shorty, you know, coming out the office from Vic Mensa. And his, his woman, they going through it, you know. They got issues. I feel like that's some... <laughs> Some insecure stuff, you know, about OnlyFans. And, and like I said, I like how they, yeah, you already heard me say it before. But, you know, the OnlyFans situation is getting out of control, you know, blah, blah. And so Shorty, you know, a little cute Shorty. Well, I'm not going to call it that because she's a young teenager, I assume. You know, she bump into, into each other, her and Kevin. And here's my hypothesis. I feel like that Shorty is going to be around for the rest of the season. I feel like, I don't know if it's going to be necessarily for get back. It could be him. Excuse me. Oh, could be him. Just actually really liking Shorty and getting with Shorty. I can see that. I can see that. Then that's when the Darnell comes out of Emmett and say, hey, man, you know what they say, man. You know? So, we get Keisha and um, old boy. He wants to take her out on a date. But, you know, her PTSD has been messing with her, so she's not really sure. But eventually, she complies. They meet up. They go on on a date. She talks about her troubles. She talks about the baby and everything. And you know, at first, I said in the video prior to this one, I said that something may be a little fishy. But I feel like he he seems genuine because his character is starting to slowly develop. You know, and so he grabs for her hands her. She starts getting traumatized. She snatches her hand away. She refuses. And then she goes through this whole kind of like traumatic um, motion where she's just reminiscing about what happened to her in the prior season. And, you know, the boy, you know, you can tell he's trying to work with her. He's trying not to come off as the as a creep. You know, he's trying. He knows he understands that this woman has been through trauma. So I'm going to try my best not to put her through that. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we get with Jake and, and Jake and Gemma. Again, this is not in order. Jake and Gemma, you know, they, they messing around. And I find it funny how every time they, they get into it with Kevin and how every time they see Kevin, they just, after, after the, the, the confrontations, they go right back to normal. They go right back to normal. Like nothing happened. Like nothing happened. I think that shit is so cold. So, you know, Jake and Gemma, you know, they're about to get their smash on. You know, they're about to get going. Trig and, and Imani catches them. Trig takes Jay, obviously. Imani t takes 
Gemma, you know, talked to her about. And now what I liked about Armani, she didn't come off as judgmental. She didn't come off as preachy. She just, she just put on the free game about <clears throat> you know, unprotected sex, how to protect yourself. And Jake, you know, he's so misguided because of his environment from the people that he grew up with and who raised him. And, you know, Trey's like the big homie. He's like that big brother. That's like, yo, man, you got to strap up, man. And you can't just... He, he's basically giving a free game. You can't just be out here just being physical with her. You got to know... You got to understand what she likes. You got to have to be interested in her more than just physical touch. And that's when I think the relationship is going to go downhill and she's going to come running back to Kevin. But it may be too late. May be too late. And it may cause a, even a, a, a rivalry. Yes, I said a rivalry. That's how this starts. A rivalry between the two, Jake and Kevin. So, you know, we go to Maisha and her video shoot, her photo shoot, you know, she's getting interviewed. You know, she's talking about her, her how about how she wants to graduate high school. She's talking about her, her potential, how eventually she may want to get into the music career. <clears throat> And as soon as she's asked about where they can find her, you see Papa take out his card, gives it to her, and you know, you can see, you can feel the vibe. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't anything, uh, ill, it wasn't anything ill. I'm trying to find a word for it. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't appropriate. It wasn't the right time to do so. It was kind of job and it made her feel away, made her look bad. So we fast forward to that. And you know, Papa, he doesn't want to get in. He doesn't want to interfere with her being great. So they part ways, you know, he doesn't, he wants to see her cherished as he says. And you know, Papa, like I said, he's a sweetheart. He's a good person. He's a good guy. He, he, he's gen, he's genuine. He's a really genuine kid. <clears throat> so However, we don't know um, what that's going to turn into. I want I'm eager to see. Well, we we'll see. We'll see in the next episode as the season wraps up. <clears throat> so you know, you get Keisha. You know she's feeling the way about her baby. She sees, she sees uh, Octavia with the baby. She says, "Have you given him a name yet?" She says, "No." Fast forward, we see Keisha coming downstairs and she's having a change of heart. And like I said in the previous videos, that she was gonna have a change of heart for this baby. And so we don't know what's gonna, we don't know how this is gonna play out. We don't know, is it gonna become an issue? Is it gonna be an easy thing? We don't know. But we just know that maybe, excuse me, y'all, I gotta get some H2O <clears throat> cotton out. She wants her baby back, and I had a feeling because even though this baby came from something, <clears throat> was born out of something treacherous, something traumatic. How can I say this? That baby is special. It's a real special baby, even if it is born from trauma. I, my only thing is when the baby gets older, How's it gonna feel? Uh, that yeah, you I was kidnapped and I was raped. That's how I had you. I mean, that's gonna be hell. So it's a lot to unpack. It's a lot to unpack. It's a lot to unfold. It's just a lot. And you know, we see Jada. You she's she's going through it. I mean, like I said, when Nina stalked Dre, she was going through it. She was crying. <clears throat> we see the lump on her breast. We see it's getting a little bigger. We don't know. I don't know if it's going to be get worse. I don't know if it's going to turn terminal. I hope not. We just got to stay prayed up for Jada. You know, it's a TV show. But, you know, but that's my little review, man. Y'all let me know if I missed anything in the review, man. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button, man. Help me get up to 2K, man. I'm, I'm going to be giving you videos back to back to back with these shows, man. And, you know, Raising Canaan, Raising Canaan coming out. It's coming out, man. It's already about to be next month, this upcoming week. So we almost there, baby. I'm definitely going to be giving reviews on that, man. Y'all just got to stay tuned in, man. Hit that subscribe button so you can get the early notifications, man. And y'all take it easy out there, man. I'm out of here.